is by definition absolutely duress. Now, stupidity is to start rattling chains before I have transitioned myself at the appropriate time to reduce duress. But the fact that you still have to do it and the fact that you know what you're doing uh, is, is, is effectively putting your name down when you don't want to but you have to is the very definition of duress. So does that give you comfort, Michael Joseph? Well, uh, let, me, let me put it like this, and I appreciate your response. Uh, is, is that not the law of necessity? In other words, um, every, let's say, you know, like when the United East States came into existence, um, they, they were bankrupt from inception as they still owed 18 million lira. So they had, by necessity, they still had to depend upon the, the crown, uh, greatly upon the crown. That was the law of necessity. And so, you know, the king turned around and granted them all sorts of stuff, but they were still very dependent upon um, the the state or the east state in which they were trying to flee from um, or to effect, maybe my words are incorrect, but they were trying to effect a new construct, but they were still vastly depended upon that which they were trying to uh, flee. Um, maybe that's, again... Well, yeah, and, and, and I hear what you're saying. Um, and what we'll do is I would love to... You know, we can talk a couple of things offline as well, but um, uh, it is uh, a principle of necessity. But I, I want everyone to understand who are on the call and who, who will listen to the call, hopefully, that um, once you once you know and yet you are forced to live in a particular way, don't for a second think that you are then agreeing to their system. You're not. You're actually demonstrating firsthand the nature of necessity and the fact that you're doing things under duress. Do you want to act this way? No. Do you want to live in the way that they're doing? No. But you have to. Well, that's duress. So I want everyone to understand that. And it has no standing when you can competently express that. And they know that. Okay? So we can, if you've got another question, I'll fire away. Otherwise, would love to have a chat with you uh, offline. Okay? Very good. Th thank you. Thanks, Thank you, Joseph. Michael. All right. Uh, we have uh, Southwest Michigan. If you could hold one moment, please, for your question. Um, there's a little side discussion going on about duress. Frank, if uh, you wanted to explain what you mean by duress or define duress. Absolutely. Well, let's go to the cannons. <laughs> Let I me think you're going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to read them all out, I promise. Okay. Um, and Southwest by the way, and you're uh, in the queue for next, uh, by the way. Okay, so, good. Okay. And, and, and no one feel uh, stressed or under duress. Uh, I'm going to add some more time on just to answer questions if, if, if we are going to run out of this hour. So I don't want people to feel that if they're patiently waiting that we, their, call won't, their question won't be answered. So... Article 137 is duress, uh, Canon 1597. Duress or coercion is any threat, fear or inducement directed against a person to act or refrain from acting in a manner they would otherwise not consider in the absence of the threat, fear or inducement. In other words, if, if, if the threat of my power being turned off was not otherwise there, then I would not participate in, in having... Bills sent to me, in all caps, as the, uh, as the Roman um, corporate person of the Cestic AV. I wouldn't transact as a slave, but I have to transition to the role. So I think that, look at 137 and there's four elements there, okay? Great, thank you, Frank. Great. Thank you, Frank. Uh, Southwest West Michigan, would you like to ask your question, please? Uh, okay, uh, hello everyone. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Um, I wanted to share an experience that we had uh, last March, uh, me and a buddy who uh, filed a, um, a, a letter to the judge in the form of a, of a notice, and uh, he went down for his pre pre-trial conference, and the prosecutor looked at his paperwork and said, are you sure you want to do this? You know, we do this every day. And uh, my buddy told him, you know, bring it on. And so he uh, went to court, and they called out his, uh, the name, and uh, he said, I'm here about the account, and 
I request permission to enter the bar with all my rights reserved. And at that point, the judge told him, uh, hold on, you don't have to say anything. Uh, we see no reason why this shouldn't be dismissed. And uh, uh, the county uh, dismissed it. Now, this happened in New York. And uh, what he sent him was, uh, in his, in his, uh, his letter of uh, uh, retributory uh, in the form of a notice, he lists first his laws, which was, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbors. Thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's property, or nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Then he listed his definitions in realm relates to jurisdiction may be shown as the subject matter, the person, or in proceedings in realm as to the theme. The next definition was res, property in contest, the authority of the court to render the judgment or decree which it assumes to make. Property relates the right given by the Almighty, and then he has in parentheses given to all. Then he has court, the house where the king remains, with his retinue, his retinue, also the place where justice is administered. Personam, against a person for the purpose of imposing a liability or obligation. Escheat, a reversion of property to the state in consequences of a want of any individual competent to inherit. Okay, that was the end of his definitions. And uh, then he listed uh, that the law of the land is the only law that can be used by the righteous. This notice is to advise that I do not grant in person arm jurisdiction or jurisdiction by a sheet. Number three, that I will determine jurisdiction or the nature and cause of the action coming before my duly constituted court. This may be its subject matter, the person, or in proceedings in realm. Number four, I will appear to determine who has or states to have a claim against me. And... Number five, that I am appearing under duress and not by voluntary participation. Number six, that my time is not free, whereas any per contractual or contractual force negotiation without the want of jurisdiction will incur a fee of $200 per hour and any part of the same and $2,000 if incarcerated. Those who do not love truth and who take pleasure in injustice will be the givers, will be givers Further, will be given further delusions by God so that they become deceived by their own lies. And that well, I love it. And I pre- appreciate you reading it out. And I'd love to, if you ever have the opportunity, and, and if, uh, if, if the fellow would consent for you, I would love to have a, have a copy of that if, uh, if it ever happened. Um, thank you for oh, reading yeah, it he, out. He, yes, he would email mm-hmm. it to you because we were, you know, when we did this, we uh, we were still trying to figure out what actually took place because they didn't even yeah. try him. They didn't even try to. Yeah. Uh, they didn't try anything. You know, he said by the time he made it to the end of the the aisle to cross into the bar, the prosecutor yeah. jumped up and said something into the judge's ear, and then the judge uh, stopped him when he started making his uh, announcement that uh, he was requesting to enter the bar with all his rights reserved, and yeah. the judge said, "You don't have to say another word." Uh, I see no reason why this shouldn't be dismissed, and the county wants to dismiss it, uh, you know, case dismissed. And so yeah. we were actually so you, still trying to figure out what took place. Okay. Now, based on what you've heard tonight and maybe what you've read, or, or you may not have obviously got through, <laughs> there's a lot there I've seen in positive law and other law. But some of the things we spoke about tonight, you understand that the prosecutor is the administrator and that the judge is acting as the trustee, and at that point, the executor of the of the trust. Do you understand that? Of the Sester KBs, yeah? Yeah. So they are holding, the judge at that moment is holding all the liability, yeah? Yeah. Now, the judge holds all the cards up until he's dealing with a competent opponent, yeah? Mm-hmm. Okay. When he's dealing with a competent opponent, what you what, in fact, you've done is you've evoked... Believe it or not, you've evoked several things in one. I, w- I won't go through them all, but I will go through some pertinent ones if that's okay. And then, yeah, again, what we might do is this might be something to talk about again in another talk show. We'll take offline. But the first is, by evoking scripture, remember that the third form of law they've slipped in now is Talmudic law. And Talmudic law is based on the, the, the principles that come from the Old Testament. But with uh, our good old friends, the Khazars, the bankers, the uh, Scardians um, claiming control. And so in that, 
when you um, look at the Noahide laws, uh, the judge is obliged not to convict in deceitful manner, right? Mm -hmm. So by demonstrating competence and doing what was done, uh, it was enough to frighten the judge that he would be gambling with his career if he sought a conviction through the deception normally that the bar do, yeah? Okay. So he, he basically gambled that his career wasn't worth hearing the case and the, and the prosecutor agreed because the prosecutor's up for the same charges, right? Right. Only because they're holding that role of being both the trustee and the executor and the administrator. In other words, they're liable for their own deception, yeah? Yes. Okay. Now, just quickly, when you look at the ecclesiastical deed poll, you'll see a, a similar approach, but maybe not as... as, as uh, well, I think what you read out was beautiful, by the way. I think it was absolutely brilliant. Um, the ecclesiastical deed poll kind of tries to attack the root of the tree, getting going after the Sesta KV, right? Uh -huh. But it just shows the power of competence. Uh, it won't always work because we're dealing with people who are constantly... Uh, trying to keep the tricks alive, but I think that was an excellent example, and I appreciate you sharing it. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. Uh, can uh, you leave an email where we might uh, email you this uh, this, uh, this uh, letter that he uh, sure. Up? Well, even you email from the back of One Heaven. If you go to One Heaven and, and get that email and send it through, I'll get it. Oh, okay. But, uh, okay. We, we th will thank you again for sharing that. Very much appreciate it. Yeah, because uh, we. Uh, uh, we kind of inferred that the Ten Commandments were divine law, and the only thing that a corporation or a fiction can be attempting to do is steal, is lie, to steal your energy, uh, cover thy neighbor's property. They have to bear false witness. They have to do all. They have to commit all these sins uh, in order to steal uh, your soul or steal your energy. Yeah. Well, if you. I, I, I hope you don't mind because of. of I want to be able to answer every question, and I, and I don't want to not do justice to what you've shared because I know a lot of callers, people who are listening would find what you've shared is fascinating and I hope to be able to post and, 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 and have a look at it and hopefully other people will read it. I just wanted to say there is, you, 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 you struck certain chords with them. When you, I'm sure when you read the positive law and as we shared tonight you'll understand why. But what I shared to you was that you, you hit them on the issue of competence and you hit them on Talmudic and you hit them on the risk that as trustee and as executor and as the prosecutor, as the administrator, they were going to gamble that if they did any trickery and they put it under duress, then effectively under appeal, they could be up losing their job. So thank you. Um, again, I appreciate that. If you don't have any other questions other than sharing that, um, hopefully you can come back and ask questions later or... You know, we'll we'll come again and talk a bit more about it in the next talk show. Yeah. Yes. Th yes. Thank you, Southwest Michigan. If you have another question, you could go ahead and do star eight in the queue. Uh, was he the North Carolina? Did you have a question? No, I did not. Okay. Oh. Okay. Uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, next is Idaho. Idaho, are you there? I just heard I was unmuted, so I picked up the phone. Okay, I'm sorry. I just wanted uh, to know where to access all the um, the ones that he's done, these introductory. This is like the third one. And is there some place on any of the websites where they're going to be converted to MP3 so that it's like not on TalkShoe? Because I think a lot of us don't necessarily want to be members. They want to be able to access it on the website as a, as a file to be able to listen to. Are you asking about getting the call from Talk to? Yeah, like from the beginning. You know, like um uh you know, Frank has an account I guess with uh Talk to now. Um the Ucadia. I mean, this is a Ucadia call. And I was wondering if all the calls, I mean, this call is excellent and I I want other people to be able to access it easily and I I find Talk to it's it's difficult to access unless you're a member and you know anyway I've had problems accessing it I thought oh, it would okay, be maybe an MP3 on you know on one of his websites okay I'll, I'll, I'll try to help clear up that that information for everyone when you go to uh, talkshoe.com there's a search bar near the top 
and it allows you to put in a call.